In this lesson, I want to demonstrate the use of floats and div tags to set up a traditional CSS based page layout. What I've done is I've created a really simple HTML file. I'm using div tags and for each div tag I've set an ID and then I control it in the CSS. So this is the end result. I've set the background color. Now this isn't centered for the whole thing. I'm not worried about that right now. But I've set the background color to black. I've set a color for the header, for each, for the sidebar, for the main div, and for the footer. So you can see how each one is defined. If I look at the HTML, you'll see this is a very simple HTML page. I have simply declared it, put a title in, and then I have a div with an ID of container which closes down here at the bottom. Then you have an interior nested div, which is your header. Notice that closes before the sidebar. A div with the ID of sidebar closes before main. A div with the ID of main. And a div with the footer. And each one of those has enough text in it to show you which is which all of the formatting and positioning was done in the style sheets. So I have the background color set to black, font color set to black, and that would be inherited in each of these divisions if I don't override it, and my font family set. I don't set the four color, which is the font color when it's applied to text, or the font family in any of the other divisions because they will automatically inherit it. Now these aren't technically div tags here, they are here in the HTML. And what's important is that the CSS is defining the ID. When you define the ID in CSS, it starts with a pound sign. So I've defined the container with a width of 960 pixels. That's pretty standard. A background color and a top padding of 5 pixels. So in the container, it has some padding up here, the background color, which is just slightly off-white, and you can see it shining through wherever there is not another div. So you can see all of that is the container, and since it wraps the other pieces, it holds them together. I have my header, which I don't have to do any special floating with. I've set the height to 200 pixels, so it takes up a good block. You don't need to set the width. It automatically expands to fill the whole thing if you're not having columns next to it. I've set its background color and I've put a margin on it just so that you can see the container color showing through. For the main, I've set its width to 750 pixels. I put a border color on this to show you that you can and a margin and a background color and this is floating right. Normally I would not put a height on one of these but I wanted to block this out and it will only expand to show the contents if you don't do a height. Sidebar, width of 180. You'll notice my 180 and 750 don't add up to 960 because I'm leaving room for padding. They have borders, they have margins, background color, and this one's floating left. Now in the footer, I have to clear the floats or it won't work. Watch what happens if I take this out. I'm going to save this and update it. See how everything floats up here, you've got to add the clear statement or it breaks your alignment. By putting that clear in, it makes everything go back to stacking normally and it ends up at the footer of your page. So your assignment, I want you to create a similar layout, but make it a three column layout. So see how you would do this where you'd have three main columns, header, footer, three columns. I'll leave it to you to figure out the differences between a two column and three column layout, but I do want to show you something. If I had made this float left, notice nothing changes. That should give you the 
hint that you need to make a three-column layout. They can all float to the same side.